I'm telling you folks, this presidency thing is a very, very serious thing. Trump don't care about nobody, no one, not even his own family. You better vote like your life depend on it because it do. Because Trump, he don't care about your finance, their finance. He is robbing and taking, robbing and taking. He's like a pig in a in a, in a trough, just trying to take the food from the other pigs. You know, he Trump is a hog, man. You guys better really vote for your freedom and democracy, because it's gonna be over. America will be over if this man take over. You think Putin's bad? You let Trump take over. Think about it. Listen to this video and listen to this guy talk about what's going on because your freedom is in jeopardy. Liz Cheney wants Ted Cruz out of the Senate. It involves the Green Bay sweep, January 6th, and his involvement in the insurrection. She wants, Liz Cheney wants him out of the Senate. She does not want him there on January 6, 2025. I'll go over this in a second. Things are moving very quickly above the ground. Ted Cruz has now agreed to debate Colin Allred. This is huge. Why? Well, thank you to one of my listeners who sent me a new poll. This shows it's a morning consult poll. This is incredible. Colin Allred is now leading Ted Cruz by two percentage points in a morning consult poll that came out two days ago. Thank you to a listener who emailed me that poll. It's happening very, very quickly. Things are changing very quickly. And while I'm optimistic and I know things will get better, They will also get ugly, and and it's up to you and me to decide how ugly things are going to get. We have to win this thing. This is the mop-up for September 21st, 2024. I'm David Feldman in New York City. Thank you so much for finding me. Please like this episode so I remain in your feed. As I said, I read all your comments feel free to leave one or contact me over at my website. And please share this episode. It's the best way to help me and this community out. We're going to have a vice president debate watch party October 1st. Good versus evil. It's the final battle. Coach Walls versus J.D. Vance. I'll have more details next week on how we can all get together on October 1st to watch the debate and then talk about it. I'm David Feldman here in New York City. We're two deputy mayors working for New York City Mayor Eric Adams had their cell phones seized by federal agents as the Justice Department, the IRS, and the FBI investigate the mayor's office. Our police commissioner was forced to resign last week and the school's chancellor also had his phone seized. Well, what's going on? I think the feds are just cracking down on too much screen time. I think that's what it is. The government is seizing all the phones because everyone who works for Mayor Adams, from the police commissioner, the chancellor of schools, to the two deputy mayors, they're spending way too much time on social media. That's why the feds are seizing their phones. I think that's it. This is Wisconsin Republican Congressman Glenn Grothman, who appeared on C-SPAN yesterday, blaming Democrats for trying to kill the SAVE Act. The SAVE Act is a bill crafted by Speaker Mike Johnson and his boss, Donald Trump, earlier this year a bill that makes it illegal for non-citizens to vote in federal elections even though it's already illegal for non-citizens to vote in federal elections which is why it never happens with the 2024 budget expiring on september 30th and no 2025 budget to replace it donald trump 
has reportedly given Mike Johnson orders to shut down the government on October 1st if Democrats refuse to pass a continuing resolution with the SAVE Act attached to it. After Johnson's first attempt failed this week to pass what is called a dirty continuing resolution with the SAVE Act attached, Congressman Grothman, Republican, went on C-SPAN on Thursday and said there is rampant evidence of undocumented immigrants voting in federal elections. He went on to say it's obvious this is exactly what Democrats want. They want undocumented immigrants to vote for Kamala Harris, which is why they refuse to vote for the continuing resolution with the SAVE Act attached. When Republican Congressman Grothman was asked by C-SPAN, you say there's overwhelming evidence of undocumented immigrants voting in federal elections. Can you cite any of that evidence? Congressman Grothman answered, quote, well, I haven't seen any evidence yet, but I know it exists. We all know it exists, unquote. There is zero evidence of voter fraud. Zero. There is zero evidence of undocumented migrants voting in federal elections. Zero. But this is Donald Trump's below the ground game. Donald Trump has already begun planting the seeds of another stolen election myth. He's already accusing Democrats of busing in millions and millions and millions of migrants to vote for Kamala Harris in key battleground states. And part of his plan is to get Democrats on record, like this week, or last week, this week, get Democrats on record to vote against the SAVE Act so he and his flunkies, like Congressman Grothman, can say, see, they're for undocumented migrants voting. Now, back in 2017, when Trump first became president, he claimed at least 5 million undocumented immigrants voted in the 2016 presidential election for Hillary Clinton, which is why he claimed, I lost the popular vote. So his first year in office, he convened a presidential election integrity commission to prove voter fraud. And he put Vice President Mike Pence and Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach in charge. And they promised Give us a year and we will expose the millions and millions and millions of undocumented migrants who were bussed in over the border by Democrats to cast their ballots for Hillary Clinton. And one year later, after the commission was founded, headline from the Associated Press, report Trump commission did not find widespread voter fraud. Let me read the first paragraph. Dateline Portland, Maine, the Associated Press. The now disbanded Voting Integrity Commission launched by the Trump administration uncovered no evidence to support claims of widespread voter fraud, according to an analysis of administration documents released Friday. That, get a screenshot of that if you want. August 3rd, 2018. There is not, there has never been evidence of voter fraud. Zero. It does not exist. There is not a single shred of evidence of any undocumented migrants or immigrants voting in federal elections. Zero. Trump knows he's going to lose. There's new polling out this morning that tells an even worse story for Donald Trump and the Republicans, worse than the story we were telling yesterday. I'll go over that later, but suffice to say, Kamala Harris's post-debate bounce is uniform. 
and it's solidifying her lead nationally as well in three key battleground states that comprise the blue wall especially Pennsylvania. She is leading consistently for the past six weeks, according to the polling averages, in Pennsylvania. Game over. Trump knows after he loses, his life starts getting more dismal. It goes from pathetic to tragic after November 5th. He faces, and we all know this, he faces years of litigation, All this while debt on his commercial real estate that's completely underwater. All that debt starts coming due. And of course, Melania will want half of what's left. There's also the distinct possibility of prison. Now, I've been getting serious traction on something I mentioned earlier this week. And I checked with a couple of constitutional scholars to make sure I'm not pulling this out of my you-know-what. You might remember, if you watch every show, I said, forget the Supreme Court's July 1st ruling on presidential immunity. I said, I suspect special counsel Jack Smith is thinking, who cares that the court ruled ex-presidents can't be tried for crimes they committed while performing official duties in the White House. Who cares? Because Trump has been committing new crimes since he left the Oval Office, and he doesn't get to enjoy any of the immunities delineated by the Supreme Court's July 1st ruling. I double-checked on this. Right now, Donald Trump is a private citizen. And he is committing crimes, and he's about to commit even worse crimes after he loses. We all know this. I wouldn't venture a guess as to what new crimes special counsel Jack Smith might begin charging Donald Trump with after November 5th. But I have a feeling topping the list is wire fraud. We know Trump's Save America PAC raised hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars promising to investigate voter fraud after he lost the 2020 election. Right after Election Day 2020, he set up the Save America PAC and began raising hundreds of millions of dollars because he said that's what he needed to investigate voter fraud. Close to four years later, nobody knows where that money went. I have heard that former New York City Police Commissioner under Rudy Giuliani, Bernard Carrick, told Special Counsel Jack Smith last year that he, Bernard Carrick, was hired by Rudy Giuliani right after the 2020 election to dig up evidence of voter fraud. And Rudy Giuliani promised his old police commissioner, Bernard Carrick, that Trump would pay him through this newly created Save America PAC set up the day after election day. But that paycheck for Bernard Carrick never materialized, never. Trump raised hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, but he still owes Rudy Giuliani roughly $3 million. We know that from Rudy's bankruptcy filings. Rudy never got paid for all that work trying to prove election fraud. And that means Bernard Carrick also never got paid. Carrick, former police commissioner, Under Rudy, Mr. Stop and Frisk, who made it illegal for young black people to leave their homes. Mr. Stop and Frisk, police commissioner of New York, Bernard Carrick. He is a convicted felon. He was convicted and pled guilty to defrauding the United States government. And he ended up getting pardoned by Donald Trump. He did some prison time. And then he got pardoned by Donald Trump in the last couple of weeks of the Trump presidency. 
Reportedly, Bernard Carrick, Rudy's police commissioner, there are reports that he told the special counsel Jack Smith last year that he was disgusted by Donald Trump because Donald Trump owes him money. And what I have heard is while talking with special counsel Jack Smith, Bernard Carrick, the police commissioner under Rudy Giuliani, who's still owed money by Donald Trump, Bernard Carrick recommended to special counsel Jack Smith that the federal government look into the Save America PAC. And it's crime of wire fraud. It is against the law to use the internet to raise money on false pretenses. You can't raise hundreds of millions of dollars promising MAGA morons their money is going to go towards investigating election fraud, and it doesn't go there. Roughly five months after January 6, 2021, on May 2, 2021, Biden had just taken office. Former New York City Police Commissioner, Mr. Stop and Frisk, Bernard Carrick, wanted to get paid by Donald Trump. And he knew that something didn't look right. So he took to Twitter. And here's the tweet from Bernard Stop and Frisk Carrick uh, that reads, and this is from May 2nd, 2021. Let me go full screen here, okay? This is Bernard Stop and Frisk Carrick, May 2nd, 2021. I want to know what the GOP did with the quarter of one billion dollars they collected for the election legal fight. Lawyers and law firms that didn't do shit, I'll say it, shit, were paid lots of money and the people that worked their ass off got nothing. That's what Bernard Carrick tweeted on May 2nd. 2021. He was complaining that the GOP raised a quarter of a billion dollars to investigate election fraud and the people who worked their asses off didn't get shit, unquote. That's Bernard Carrick, the police commissioner of New York, always had a way with words. Real class act. Truth is, Bernard Carrick didn't work his ass off investigating election fraud. He simply lied about voter fraud. Bernard Carrick's job for Rudy right after the election was to uncover evidence of voter fraud, election fraud. And he came up with nothing. That's why Rudy lost 60 cases in front of 60 judges during the lead up to January 6th. When the judges asked Rudy for evidence of voter fraud, all Rudy could ever say was, quote, I have theories, but so far, no evidence. That's what he said to the judges. I have theories, but so far, no evidence. But Carrick, he knew. Rudy, he knew. Donald Trump, he knew. There never was any evidence. Bernard Carrick took the job because Rudy told him, one last heist. Trump is raising hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to investigate election fraud. And we'll get some of this. We just have to travel around the country, stay at nice hotels, get drunk, pretending to look for non-existent voter fraud. They never look for voter fraud because there isn't any. And Trump knew that they weren't looking for voter fraud because there isn't any. And that's one of the reasons Donald Trump didn't pay Rudy Giuliani and Bernard Carrick. The, the real, well, the real reason is Donald Trump doesn't pay anybody, right? But he knew exactly what they were doing. He knew they weren't looking for voter fraud. He knew they were just traveling around the country and 
racking up billable hours. He knew. You can't con a con artist. Former New York, well, you can actually, but uh, unless there's unless you're stupid like Rudy Giuliani and Bernard Carrick. Former New York City Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick is a convicted felon. He went to prison and ended up getting pardoned by Trump. Now, Carrick, Bernard Carrick, is a really bad con artist. Right after 9-11, he began using an apartment near... I mean, this is sacrilege, and he still shows up at Ground Zero on September 11th with Rudy. This is what a pig... Bernard stop and frisk Carrick is. Right after 9-11, he was using an... It's funny. I know it's about 9-11, but it's funny. I'm not going to laugh because it involves 9-11. Right after 9-11, Bernard Carrick began using an apartment right near Ground Zero that had been reserved for first responders to sleep and shower in. He used that apartment in order to conduct extramarital affairs. This means first responders digging through wreckage weren't able to shower or take naps because Bernard Carrick needed to get laid. The heroes, the first responders who who Rudy Giuliani has built an entire career hiding behind, as has Bernard Carrick. The first responders couldn't get into their apartment because sex machine Bernard Carrick is too cheap to spring for a motel room when he cheats on his wife. Well, he's also, besides being a a felon, is chicken shit. Bernard Carrick, Bernard Stop and Frisk Carrick, the police commissioner of New York, he's chicken shit. In his tweet back in 2021, he says, I want to know what the GOP did with the quarter of a billion dollars they raised for the election legal fight. See, even there he has to lie because he's chicken shit. He's afraid of Donald Trump. Bernard Chicken Shit Carrick knew full well when he tweeted this that the GOP completely washed its hands of Donald Trump's election fraud claims within weeks of Donald Trump's loss to Joe Biden. By late November of 2020, nobody from the Republican Party took part in Trump's attempt to overturn the election results. Romney's uh, niece or cousin uh, uh, was chairman of the RNC. She helped out with the election, the false elector scheme. That she, I don't know how she didn't get indicted, but everybody else in the Republican Party, especially the lawyers, washed their hands of the 2020 election after Trump lost. All the Republicans, Rona McDaniel, Rob Romney, that's her name, Uh, Romney's, what is she, cousin, niece? But all the Republican lawyers closed up shop, went home, wanting nothing to to do with it. So the lawyers for Trump after election day in 2020 were Rudy Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, Sidney Powell, John Eastman, and Kenneth Cheesebro. And, of course, police commissioner and convicted felon Bernard Carrick. They were all part of the legal team, the investigative team, assembled by Donald Trump. They didn't work for the government, and they didn't work for the GOP. And Bernard Chicken Shit Carrick knows this. That quarter of a billion dollars raised for the election legal fight immediately after Donald Trump lost... That was raised by Donald Trump and his newly created Save America PAC. It had nothing to do with the GOP, and Bernard Carrick knew that when he tweeted it. 
But Carrick had just been pardoned by Donald Trump, so he didn't want to piss him off. Two years later, Bernard Carrick still had not gotten paid. And the Save America PAC had, they, by May, it had raised a quarter of a billion dollars. After uh, uh, Bernard Carrick tweeted that, the Save America PAC went on to raise hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars and no money for any of the lawyers or Bernard Carrick. So, two years later, Carrick still had not been paid and he was angry and he was called to testify before Special Counsel Jack Smith's Washington, D.C. grand jury, the election interference case. Carrick, we are pretty certain, cracked. He, we are pretty certain, uh, we're pretty certain he told special counsel Jack Smith to look into wire fraud, to charge Trump with raising hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars that Bernard Carrick reportedly, we are told, said is unaccounted for all raised on false prom- premises and promises. Donald Trump set up the Save America PAC the day after election day, promising to look into election fraud. Millions, a quarter of a billion by May of 2021, according to Bernard Carrick. Carrick told Jack Smith, All the clowns hired by Donald Trump to pretend to look into election fraud never got paid. Carrick and every single lawyer indicted in the Georgia RICO trial never got paid. They were all hired to investigate election fraud. They all got indicted in the Georgia RICO trial. They never got paid and Donald Trump wouldn't even pay their legal fees. So, special counsel Jack Smith asked Bernard Carrick, where'd the money go? And Bernard Carrick supposedly said, I don't know, you tell me. At least $100 million that we know of went towards legal fees, and Bernard Carrick in his tweet mentions that. We also know 132,000 went to Hervé Pierre, Hervé Pierre is Melania's, Melania Trump's stylist. However, I don't like his work. I prefer Melania's old stylist. Remember him? The one who fitted her naked body with diamonds and a chrome pistol while she was handcuffed to her then boyfriend's Boeing 727 back in 2000 for her GQ photo shoot. I like that stylist a lot better. In her new book that's out right now, Melania defends that photo shoot, calling it art. Well, yeah, but it was derivative art. It reminded me of Mamie Eisenhower's topless photo shoot for Life magazine, where Mamie Eisenhower is hogtied to her husband's World War II era army jeep down on all fours eating chili from a dog bowl. Remember that photo shoot of former first lady, maybe Eisenhower? That was art. The photo shoot Melania did naked, holding a chrome pistol handcuffed to Donald's Boeing 727. Is that really art? I, uh, I don't know. The point is, New York Magazine reported last year that hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Save America PAC went for portraits of Donald and Melania that they donated to the Smithsonian. But not a single penny went to any of the lawyers or Bernard Carrick who investigated or pretended to investigate election fraud. 
about $100 million out of the Save America PAC reportedly has gone towards the lawyers who are keeping Donald Trump out of prison, as well as defending him in the civil fraud trials and and the Egan Carroll trials. Now, nobody knows if that's legal. Well, we do know it's legal. The problem is the FEC, the Federal Elections Commission, is evenly split between Republicans and Democrats. And the Republicans on the FEC refuse to issue the obvious ruling that money donated to a political action committee cannot be used for legal expenses. But regardless of the FEC not ruling on where the money is allowed to be spent, we do know it is wire fraud to start a political action committee raising cash claiming to small donors that all your money is for election integrity so we can investigate voter fraud and not a penny went to the people who didn't deserve to get paid none of it went to the lawyers of bernard carrick where did it go we're getting a rough idea and this is criminal and it's not protected by the supreme court's july 1st immunity ruling it all happened after he left the oval office so trump has to win this election by any means necessary it's uh this is not a safe time it's not a good time to be apathetic to be on the fence not to be knocking on doors doing phone banking for kamala your your democratic congressional candidate and john tester and colin allred and all the other we do not want the republicans to have control of the senate on january 6. so the the people who donated to uh he's raised hundreds and hundreds by may 2nd of 2021 the save america pack had already <laughs> raised 250 billion dollars that was more than three years ago He's still raising money. How much? New York Magazine reports that more than 60% of all the money raised for Donald Trump's Save America PAC came from retirees on fixed incomes. Let me just smell that for a second. New York Magazine reports that... mm, New York Magazine reports that more than 60% of all the money raised for the Save America PAC came from retirees on fixed incomes. But don't worry, Trump voters. Don't worry, Trump senior citizens. You're going to get it all back when Donald Trump becomes president and guts Social Security and Medicare and orders the Federal Trade Commission to drop yesterday's lawsuit filed against pharmacy benefit managers who jack up the price for life-saving drugs like insulin. I'll talk about that over the weekend. Most of this money for the Save America PAC, in fact, all of it, practically, practically all of it was raised and then spent after Trump left office. All of this is wire fraud committed outside the protective blanket of presidential immunity, no matter what the Supreme Court said on July 1st. I checked with several constitutional scholars and some people have written me and said, you know, you're absolutely right. Even this Supreme Court cannot protect Donald Trump from the crimes he commits after leaving office. 
Wire fraud is the crime we can be somewhat certain Jack Smith is prepared to charge Donald Trump with after November 5th of this year, assuming Trump loses, which he's going to. Now, Donald Trump is staring into the electoral abyss. What fresh crimes is Donald Trump guilty of right now? What fresh crimes that we don't know about is he guilty of right now? What fresh crimes will Donald Trump be committing as he descends deeper and deeper into the bunker as he wages his final battle, not caring who or what he destroys on his way down. I doubt he will be able to summon another January 6th style insurrection. Then again, who knows? Who knows? Who knows what will happen when the moment of truth for Republicans arrive? Who knows where their loyalty will be? With Donald Trump or the Constitution? Who knows how many true believers exist in and out of our government? We know, I've read you the numbers, we know a vast majority of Republicans believe this election is the final battle between good and evil. We know Ginny Thomas, Clarence Thomas's unhinged wife, we know she inundated White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in the lead up to January 6, urging Trump to keep fighting, calling this the final battle between good and evil. We know Samuel Alito, Judge Samuel Alito's unhinged wife, was flying her flag upside down in the days leading up to Joe Biden's inauguration. She was signaling a nation in distress just days after January 6th. She was saying Joe Biden is an illegitimate president. She then flew an appeal to heaven flag over the Alito family's vacation home in New Jersey. An appeal to heaven flag. Now that was the flag carried by many into the Capitol on January 6th. A lot of those insurrectionists that day subscribe to what is called an apostolic biblical worldview, where Christian nationalists are instructed to conquer the seven mountains of society. I've done a lot of shows on this. That same appeal to heaven flag now stands outside Speaker Mike Johnson's office door. See that? As we speak, Mike Johnson is waving an appeal to heaven flag outside his office door in the Capitol. The same flag some of the insurrectionists carried into that building on January 6th because they believed as a vast preponderance of Republicans believe that this is the final battle between good and evil. We know Donald Trump, after he loses, will want a repeat of January 6th. We now know he's going to be claiming that millions and millions and millions of migrants were bust into the battleground states to vote for Kamala Harris. And we know there are willing accomplices inside the pro-Putin wing of the Republican Party, specifically in the House of Representatives, who will once again attempt to create enough chaos in the lead up to January 6th that the Supreme Court 
will be forced to either award the presidency to Donald Trump or, more conceivably, but equally bad, throw the election into the House of Representatives like they did in 1876, where, because of how each state is weighted in the voting, Donald Trump would win the presidency, despite losing the popular vote and the Electoral College on November 5th. Now, that was always the plan. That was the plan back in 2020. I've gone over the polling. At no point in 2020 was there a polling average showing Joe Biden losing. There, were, there was never any polling averages showing Joe Biden losing. They hatched a plan. They knew Donald Trump early on by, I would say, September of 2020. They knew that he was going to lose. And that's why John Eastman was called in to already set up challenges, uh, election fraud challenges. They knew he was going to lose. Uh, We know that. We know that. It was always the plan in 2020. It's the plan again, but it's bigger and better this time. It's the below the ground game none of us are seeing. Because the Supreme Court, we know, the Supreme Court has been delaying the prosecution of all the participants uh, from January 6th, federally. Trump, the unindicted co-conspirators. We, we, we figured when those indictments came down a year ago, by now, Jack Smith would be targeting Boris Epstein, Mark Meadows, Rudy Giuliani, Kenneth Cheesebro. Uh, did I mention Rudy Giuliani? But the Supreme Court has slow walked, delayed the prosecution which means the plan for 2020 is now the plan for 2024. All it takes is true believers willing to risk it all in the battle between good and evil. What do I think the chances are for a repeat of January 6th or worse? Well, the presidential election will be certified, or it's supposed to be certified on January 6th. Now, up until 2020, it was always a ceremonial procedure. But Trump changed that. Granted, there are new laws passed in late 2021 spelling out that January 6th is purely ceremonial. They, Joe Biden and the democratically controlled Senate and House were able to pass new legislation saying January 6th is purely ceremonial. Homeland Security is beefing up protection on January 6th. But on January 3rd, the new members of Congress will be sworn in. On January 3rd, whoever wins the House and the Senate on November 5th of this year, will be sworn in three days before January 6th. We have a new Congress on January 3rd. Up until January 3rd, Mike Johnson will be Speaker of the House. He will not be able to pass any laws because the Democrats control the Senate and Joe Biden can veto. He won't be able to pass any laws, but he can give credence to claims of a stolen election. And that's incredibly dangerous. He, and I suspect this is the plan, Jim Jordan, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, will be told to hold hearings looking into voter fraud during the lame duck session of Congress. 
Donald Trump on November 5th is going to refuse to concede. He's going to claim millions and millions of non-citizens voted for Kamala Harris. And Mike Johnson is going to say, we should find out. We, we owe it to the voters to find out. And, uh, and that's, shouldn't we investigate this? Shouldn't we investigate this? Knowing that he's lying, he's being disingenuous, but he's hiding under the cover of, shouldn't we find out if this election was stolen by migrants? And of course the hearings won't change anything other than convincing millions and millions of Americans that Kamala Harris and the Democrats stole the election. Okay, now it's a given that the Democrats are going to win back the House. But it's also given that the Democrats are going to lose the Senate. As of this morning, Colin Allred's two-point lead over Ted Cruz notwithstanding, it's a given at, if the election were held today, the Democrats would win the House, lose the Senate. Trump has been able to control Republican members of the House. Trump's tentacles never reached into the Senate because Mitch McConnell, his horrible right-wing politics notwithstanding, is still an institutionalist. His wife quit the Trump cabinet right after January 6th. So Mitch McConnell stood up to Donald Trump, except for the Supreme Court. He is returning to the Senate for the next Congress, but will have no leadership role. So as of this morning, Republicans are going to take the Senate. Trump knows this. What kind of chaos could a Republican-controlled Senate create starting on January 3rd when they take the Senate? What kind of chaos will Speaker Mike Johnson create until January 3rd, having Jim Jordan looking into voter fraud and then assuming Hakeem Jeffries becomes the Speaker, we don't know who's going to head the Senate when if the Republicans take it. Jim Jordan will hand off to the Senate on January 3rd his work proving election fraud what mischief will a republican controlled senate create on january 6 mike johnson a speaker he wrote the amicus brief uh, that went before the supreme court claiming election fraud what mischief, what will Mike Johnson and, and Jim Jordan do to reinforce the idea that the election was stolen? You don't have to convince a majority. That it, you just need to convince a couple of million MAGA morons that the election was stolen before you hand the gavel over to Hakeem Jeffries, the new Democratic speaker on January 3rd. Even worse, but it's not going to happen. What, hap what if Mike Johnson and the Republicans keep the House of Representatives? Then, then what does January 6 look like? Joe Biden will still be commander in chief. But most Republicans read the polls, read the polls. Most Republicans believe Joe Biden is an illegitimate president who stole the election from Donald Trump. What chaos will Donald Trump and his Republican minions be able to ignite in the days immediately following his defeat on November 5th? Who among the MAGA faithful will enable him? Go along with it. You know, the same way Majority Leader in the House Kevin McCarthy did. 
you know, he would say, you know, four years ago, right after Trump lost, he, you know, they would say, we just need to hold his hand. He's going to get there. This is what McCarthy said. He's going to get there. We just need to ease Trump into acceptance of his defeat. That's what Kevin McCarthy and the House leaders were saying in in November of 2020 and uh, parts of December of 2020. Indulge him until the middle of December. He's going to come around. We spoke to Jared Kushner. We spoke to Ivanka. He's almost there. He's He almost realizes he lost. That's what they said four years ago. That's what some of them said. Then there were others who were just like Jim Jordan and Scott Perry and Marjorie Taylor Greene and General Michael Flynn who were meeting in the White House and Let's just let's just take it. Who cares what the vote? But there were these other patrician like Republicans in the House who were pretending we're we're just trying to ease him. And they believed it. I think a lot I think Kevin McCarthy believed if I could just hold Trump's hand, he'll see that he lost. Now the planning of January sixth four years ago. There were two fronts here. And and I guess if you're not addicted to this stuff, it's a little confusing and they want it to be confusing. They don't want you to remember things. <clears throat> so let me let me tell you or remind you of how January 6 worked and what they're planning. And, you know, uh, they learn from mis- everybody learns from their mistakes. This is why Trump is more dangerous this time around. You know, they learned from Nixon. Never admit you were wrong. Never apologize. They learned from 2020. And this has the potential to be a difficult transition period from Biden to Kamala. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It just has the potential to be a little unpleasant uh, or not unpleasant, uh, horribly tragic, especially for the people who work in our government and have to protect each other. Okay, this is why you've got to work for Kamala Harris and Coach Walls and John Tester. You got to get off your ass and get to work for your country. You know, I did a benefit last night. It's good for your mental health. We did a benefit with Congressman Jamie Raskin. And it's just good for your mental health to at least feel like you have if at least if it goes down we tried so the planning for january 6 involved two fronts and 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 this time i think they're going to get it right there were the insurrectionists who stormed the capitol and interrupted the proceedings but the other plan the much more important plan was the Green Bay Sweep. Now, you have heard me talk about the Green Bay Sweep. I know some of my listeners are sick and tired of my talking about the Green Bay Sweep, but the Green Bay Sweep was the plan all along. The insurrection where they stormed the building, that wasn't supposed to happen. The plan went awry. And the Green Bay sweep, I believe, would have been pulled off had not Donald Trump done such a great job inciting the crowd. They didn't think, uh, the people who came up with the Green Bay sweep didn't think they were going to storm the Capitol. They thought the MAGA morons were going to linger outside the Capitol and create a creepy pall 
over the ceremony. Okay. The people who organized the Green Bay Sweep, there were two fronts, there were two competing uh, groups working under Donald Trump, those who were trying to incite an actual insurrection and, and the more refined mechanics of the Constitution were trying to employ the Green Bay Sweep. The people who organized the Green Bay Sweep had no idea that the goons would storm the Capitol. They thought the goons would stand outside the Capitol, look menacing, be intimidating, while Republican members of both the House and the Senate initiated the Green Bay Sweep. Now, the Green Bay Sweep was named after Vince Lombardi, who led the Green Bay Packers to championship after championship. I think not the first Super Bowl or one of the first Super Bowls. And it's basically where the Packers flooded the zone and created so much confusion, the opposing team and the referees had no idea where the ball was. That was the Green Bay sweep. And the plan for the Green Bay sweep was to have one Republican congressman on January 6th from a swing state challenge the results from his state and then according to procedure any senator who signs on to the challenge will then force both houses of congress to go back to their separate sides of the capitol for a two-hour debate over the challenge and then after two hours they come back in for the joint session and they vote on the challenge and they debate the challenge and they use parliamentary procedure to stretch out the challenge and just have it drag on and on and on until that challenge is thrown out and another Republican congressman and another Republican senator, that's how it works, they stand up to challenge the results from another swing state. The idea was to slow walk, to turn the procedure, make it like you're walking through glue, to uh, challenge every battleground state, two hour debates on each challenge, back with a joint session, more debating, delay, 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 past January 6th. It was supposed to go into January 7th, January 8th, and no president. They can't certify. That was the Green Bay sweep. And while that's going on, MAGA crowds are gathering outside the Capitol, looking menacing. The plan is delay the certification for several days, Republicans challenge each swing state while MAGA morons begin to gather outside every state capital in America. The plan was to terrify this country, to create a national crisis where everyone is convinced we're on the break of a national meltdown, a a nervous breakdown, a civil war. And the optics are perfect for our media. The, the media would love to cover every insurrectionist and they don't have to storm the Capitol. They just show up outside state houses around the country with their firearms, which in many states they can, especially Arizona. The plan was for some rioting in the streets to justify Donald Trump invoking several of the emergency powers at his disposal and not declare martial law. You don't have to declare martial law. There are enough emergency powers. There are hundreds of emergency powers 
given to the President of the United States. I think it, they were given to him back in 1975. For him to be able to take control without saying this is mar martial law. And then the Supreme Court is asked to step in. That was the plan. The plan was to get the election out of Congress and into the hands of the Supreme Court, who would then decide there is enough evidence of voter fraud uh, for us to rule that uh, we cannot decide this election. It, the, the, it should be decided by the House of Representatives the same way Rutherford B. Hayes won in 1876. There's too much confusion. There isn't sufficient evidence to prove voter fraud. But looking at these hearings that Jim Jordan held during the lame duck session of Congress, there is some evidence. We as the Supreme Court are not going to award the presidency to anybody. We are going to send it to the House of Representatives. They will decide who's president. This was the plan in 2020. This was the Green Bay sweep in 2020. And this is the plan once again. The people who devised the Green Bay sweep knew that if the 2020 presidential election got thrown into the House of Representatives, Donald Trump wins. Now, some of you are saying, and rightfully so, wait a second, Nancy Pelosi was the Speaker of the House. Well, even though Democrats controlled the House of Representatives, the way they would vote for a president, according to the law, is each state gets one vote. So there are 50 votes for president. And the vote is determined by the congressional delegation voting. So if, if you have, you know, uh, if you're California, which has, I think, 52 members of Congress, they go off and they vote for president. And if it's 52, and let's say, I don't know, 10 are Republican and 42 are Democrat, one vote for Joe Biden. That's it. That's how it works. There are more red states than blue states. I've shown you maps where it's a sea of red. If you look at Joe Biden's victory, it's a sea of red. Uh, there are more red states. There's no, nobody lives there, but there are more red states than blue states. Trump would win. So, is this complicated? Am I am I spelling this out? Because if you don't, if I'm not doing a good job explaining this, then you're not going to understand or know how to protect. You're not going to understand what they're trying to do until it's too late. Um, it's it, I I know it's a little hard. To understand especially if 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 you're you know if you follow other things uh the plan is get this election decided by the house of representatives when the house of representatives votes for president each state gets one vote let me just go over this because it's california i think has 52 members of congress they get one vote one vote same as Wyoming. I'm not even sure Wyoming actually exists. Nobody's been able to prove to me that Wyoming is actually a place. I think Wyoming has one member of Congress. It used to be Laura, uh, uh, Liz Cheney, right? Well, 
in 2020, Wyoming had a majority of one Republican House member. So that would be one vote for Trump, assuming Liz Cheney went along with that. She probably would have gone along with it had there not been the insurrection. I don't know. Nah, I'm reading her book. She knew this was up. That's not fair to Liz Cheney. I apologize. She would not have gone along with this. I'm like 50% convinced she wouldn't have gone along with it. Uh, So Wyoming, let's just say uh, Wyoming, Liz Cheney goes along with it. Wyoming gets one vote. California gets one vote. They have 52 members of Congress, I think. Uh, 40 are Democrats, 12 are Republicans, let's say. They take a vote. California gives one vote to Biden. Wyoming gives one vote to Trump. More red states than blue states. Trump's elected president re-elected in 2020. The people who created the Green Bay sweep knew Trump would have won if they can just get it into the House of Representatives. And the plan was working on January 6. Paul Gosar, the congressman from Arizona, he was standing up challenging Arizona's results, saying there's evidence of voter fraud. We cannot accept these uh, the slate of electors. And Texas Senator Republican Ted Cruz signed on to Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar's challenge. And they were standing up, making the challenge to Arizona. Both houses, there was a joint session of Congress to certify, and they were about to send both houses of Congress back to their respective chambers for two hours to debate Paul Gosar's challenge just as the MAGA morons broke through the doors and everyone went running for cover. The MAGA morons were not supposed to break into the Capitol. They were supposed to linger outside as the Green Bay sweep went on for days and days, creating so much confusion the court would have ordered the House of Representatives to decide the election. Nobody was more disappointed by the storming of the Capitol on January 6 than the two men who devised the Green Bay sweep. Because the storming of the Capitol destroyed their chances of the Green Bay sweep ever coming to fruition and who devised the Green Bay sweep. Steve Bannon, Trump's campaign manager, then political director in the White House, then he left the White House but became a minister without portfolio, secretly advising Donald Trump in the last two or three years of his administration, and economic czar, trade czar, Peter Navarro. And they were working with this guy, Jim Jordan, in the House of Representatives to get as many members of the House to issue challenges on January 6th to string the certification of the election, to string it out for as long as possible, make it take days while angry mobs gathered outside the Capitol, as well as state capitals all over America. The January 6th committee subpoenaed a lot of people, and practically everyone complied, except for three people. A couple of other, I think Scott Perry didn't comply as well, the Pennsylvania congressman, other, for another show. Uh, three people refused to comply with the congressional subpoena, from the January 6th committee. Congressman Jim Jordan refused to comply. And he was on the phone with Trump in the lead up to January 6th. And we know he was on the phone with 
Donald Trump all day on January 6th. He was on the phone with Trump before Trump gave the speech, after he gave the speech, during the insurrection, after the insurrection. And they were still trying to figure out how to stop the certification. I know that's hard to believe. That you watch January 6th and you think, well, they're going to they're going to stop trying to stop the certification. Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman were still working the phones after the insurrection trying to get Mike Pence and other, trying to get a whip count on the number of senators and House representatives who were not going to certify for Joe Biden. After the rubble had been cleared, the tear gas had drifted away and, and members of Congress started filing back in. Jim Jordan, Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani John Eastman, Trump working the phones. Let's see who's going to certify. Sounds a little crazy, doesn't it? If you watch January 6th, you think, well, certainly everybody learned their lesson. This is dangerous. We have to certify the election for Joe Biden. How many was it? I think it's 146 Republicans after the insurrection, including Mike Johnson, including Ted Cruz, including Jim Jordan, including Kevin McCarthy, who became speaker eventually. They voted not to certify the election for Joe Biden after the insurrection. Hard to believe, isn't it? Hard to believe. We always, this, so much for accelerationists. Accelerationists think, and, 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 and uh, Nazi Germany was lousy with accelerationists. They would say, you know what? Let things get so bad People will learn their lesson and they will vote Hitler out. I remember that when Reagan became president. Uh, he created the worst recession since the Korean War, his first two years. And everybody, all these accelerationists were going, this is great. This is great. He's, 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 Reagan is proving the lie to supply side economics. It's going to be great. This, we needed this. We needed two years of this horrible recession. Let things get really bad. So uh, how many states did Walter Mondale, who ran against him in 84, get? I don't know. Did Mondale even win Minnesota? After the insurrection, I don't know. I have it somewhere. 140. 40 Republicans still voted uh, not to certify for Joe Biden. So uh, Jim Jordan refused the subpoena from the January 6th committee. We know after January 6th, he called over to the White House asking for a blanket pardon. Uh, he refused the subpoena. The chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan, who will be holding hearings after December, November 5th, looking into election fraud, refused a subpoena from the January 6th committee. And because Jim Jordan is a United States congressman, it's hard. Uh, is it the debate and speech clause? I can't remember. There's some, there's some reason why it's kind of hard to charge a congressman with contempt of Congress. But Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon, the guys who invented the Green Bay Sweep, they refused to comply with the subpoena from the January 6th committee. And as I speak, Steve Bannon is sitting in a prison cell in Connecticut after having been found guilty of contempt of Congress. Peter Navarro was released from prison during the week of the Republican convention where he spoke, a returning hero 
at the convention after serving his four months for contempt of Congress. Bannon and Navarro refused to testify. They refused to rat out Donald Trump and I'm going to say 146, 147, I don't know, let's 150 Republican members of Congress who refused to certify the election for Joe Biden after the insurrection. What could they have told the January 6th committee about the Green Bay sweep, which they invented? What could they have told us about the 150 Republican members? I don't have the exact number. It's like 100 and I want to say 147. 150 members, Republican members of Congress who held the line, obeyed the Green Bay sweep and voted not to certify, even though 140 Capitol Police officers were sent to the hospital, five, six, ended up dead. The Green Bay sweep, and I know some of you are sick of my talking about the Green Bay sweep. But if you want to understand the below the ground game that's going on right now in the Trump campaign, this is it. It's very much alive. And these Republicans will not accept the election results. Partly because they're terrified of Donald Trump. But mostly because they don't believe in democracy. Read Project 2025. These people do not believe in democracy. They rather ha- they rather trust you with a gun than a vote. And too many of these Republicans, and some of them are in the Supreme Court, believe this is a battle between good and evil. And in the battle between good and evil, you win, as Jim Jordan said in the lead up to January 6th, you win this anyway, anyhow. Doesn't matter how you win, you just win. That's kind of what the beloved Vince Lombardi, who uh, grew up in Anglewood, New Jersey, went to St. Cecilia uh, Catholic School in Anglewood, New Jersey. Vince Lombardi. It was like win- winning is everything. It's not winning isn't the only thing. It's everything, or winning isn't everything. It's the. It's just you. You win. You win. You have to win. Vince Lombardi, Green Bay sweep. Get in there and win. Right after November fifth, Jim Jordan chairman of the House Judiciary Committee will begin holding hearings on the millions and millions of imaginary migrants who voted for Kamala Harris. They're already holding hearings to determine whether or not Coach Walsh is a Manchurian candidate. You think it's beneath Jim Jordan to hold hearings on the millions and millions and millions of imaginary migrants who voted for Kamala Harris? The lame duck session of Congress with Speaker Johnson, Mike Johnson, in charge, is going to produce fake evidence that millions and millions and millions and millions of imaginary migrants were bussed in by the Democrats into Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, I hope they say Texas. Wouldn't that be nice? The reason Kamala Harris won Texas is because millions and millions of migrants were bussed in. She might win. Uh, I have I don't have time to go over some of this, but if Colin Allred is <laughs> leading Ted Cruz by two points in Texas, uh. This time around, the Republicans, they learn from their, everybody learns from their mistakes. Nobody repeated Nixon's mistakes when 
George W. Bush became president, and nobody repeated, you know, uh, no embedding, no, no troops, contra- uh, uh, no press people are allowed to freelance in Iraq. You have to be embedded with the military. That's why we lost Vietnam. Uh, that was the lesson from Vietnam. If only the, the news media weren't allowed to report Vietnam, we would have won. They learned from their mistakes. So all the reporters had to be embedded with the troops. Uh, Trump learned from Nixon. Roger Stone worked for Nixon. So uh, they learned from January 6, 2020. And they're going to learn from uh, this time around. They're going to try to do it right. No goons. No goons crashing into the Capitol, destroying the Green Bay sweep this time around. They'll be outside the Capitol looking scary. You read the July 1st Supreme Court ruling. You watched how this Supreme Court delayed and delayed the prosecution of Donald Trump. They kept his name on the ballot after Colorado kicked him off. How do you think the court is going to rule after three months, right? November 5th, and then you got about three months. You got a lame duck session with Speaker Mike Johnson, Jim Jordan holding these hearings, Donald Trump. Of all these Republicans sowing doubt about Kamala Harris's victory. How do you think this court, with the six to three Republican majority, is going to rule when the Green Bay sweep puts it in their hands? You think they're going to say what? They're going to say we got to let the House of Representatives decide this the same way they did in 1876. And Donald Trump becomes president. Based on the lie that millions and millions and millions of migrants voted illegally for Kamala Harris. That could happen. I don't think it will. But I also didn't think January 6th was happening. Uh, I remember talking to uh, guests on this show laughing about how funny it's going to be trying to get Donald Trump to leave the Oval Office. We all thought, you know, he's going to be holding on to a chair. They're going to be dragging him out. Ha ha ha. Nobody saw January 6th. So Kamala Harris, she has to win by a landslide.